It all starts with a dead girl. Ever since I was little, I've had this dream. It's the end of summer. A girl is running through the woods. The moon, the scent of pines. And then the gunshot. It always felt so real. The blood on my cheek, the cold sweat running down my skin. I'd managed to convince myself it really happened. This scar of a memory. A part of me I could never fully understand. Uh, well, that wasn't the only part. No wonder people used to think I was strange. If they only knew. That day when the phone rang, it was the hardest day of my life. The day I went home to say goodbye to my father dress him up for his last journey, put him in a suit, fix his tie. Simple. Just the things he did every day. But looking through his stuff wasn't easy. I needed a moment to pull myself together. I was almost ready. I just had to find his special tie clip. Yeah. Nice to see you, too. Looks... nourishing. go. What's your face? Glad to see you're still kicking around.
can't believe it's all still here. Oh, Jack. I guess I forgot about this one. I can do it now. fluid. I need to apply it in the right order. I have failed. I am panicked. Forrest. I have sold out. I am worthless. Last. I... Uh, what the fuck Always am I doing here? The what the fuck am I doing here? fluid. I need to apply it in the right order. the last photo I took of you, Jack. Shit. Interesting. clip. Pull yourself together, Marianne. Jack's room. It's like he never... Damn it. Jack was part of the Solidarity Movement. He spent a few months in an internment camp, but even that couldn't dampen his spirit. Come on, Jack, where'd you put it? Okay, let's do this the other way. Okay, I think that's it. Jack's waiting downstairs. Time to say goodbye. 
I used to think I'd never fit in. But Jack, he didn't mind my weirdness. He kept telling me I was special. Keep hissing at me. Who do you think's gonna feed you now? Weird to be back in my old room. So many memories. Yeah. I used to have a thing for them. Don't know why, really. I guess they just used to make me happy. Jack knew it well. That's why there's so many of them here. Kids from the orphanage. Not all of them had my luck. That's why I kept coming back. To play. To take care of them. To listen. That was the least I could do. Spirits. There was a time I'd try to run from them. To ignore their calls. Matthew was the first one I helped pass on. I used to get a lot of these. To me, they were like trophies. Badges of honor for doing the right thing. Jack wasn't too amused, but he did his best to cover for me. I kind of feel bad for making him go through all that. My oldest family heirloom. As a kid, I'd show this to people just to freak them out. I'd usually say something like, pretty sick, huh? I was such a dork. We lived upstairs from Jack's funeral home. It wasn't as weird as it sounds. Besides, if it wasn't for that, I may never have learned to use my powers. Jack taught me to accept my condition. Of all my foster parents, he was the only one who saw it as a gift and not a curse. Jack's in the prep room. Huh, weird. I don't remember locking it. The key should be in the office.
Here it is. sure if I'm ready for this. Hey, Jack. special clip? No. Where's your tie? Snazzy. You wouldn't have it any other way. I didn't expect this to be easy. I guess I didn't know what to expect. When things get personal, it... It just burns you from the inside out. There. I guess you're ready. But... Am I? people read the signs that's closed You felt it too, huh? And then it happened. As it did so many times before. Just when I thought my day couldn't get any worse. Jack. No. 
Now, you didn't happen to see my notebook, did you, darling? Uh, my memory's a bit fuzzy. So much for aging gracefully. <laughs> Jack, you should probably get some rest. Forget the notebook. Oh, no, no. I've got so much work, my dear. It's I, okay, I, Jack. No, I, I can't just... What? Let it go. Uh, it's not important. You... you are crying. What's wrong, dear? <gasps> oh, why is it so cold in here? <laughs> Is that shh, 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 shh. Mm -hmm. It's okay, Jack. Yeah. It's okay. My sweet little Marianne. <laughs> what would I ever do without you? <laughs> Jack. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. It's time to get some rest. Oh, Marianne. Yeah? No. Oh, I'm worried about the surgery. When I'm at the hospital, are, are you sure you're going to be all right? Yes, Jack. It's going to be fine. Uh, oh, you, you know, uh, I promised myself once uh, I would never let anything happen to you. Not while I'm around. I'll be fine. I promise. Uh, <laughs> Stuff, then. Huh? All right? All right, Jack. Now, get some uh, rest. I, I need, oh, yes, yes. Be, be good, Marianne. I love you, my child. I've loved you since the moment you walked into my life. Remember that. And God help you if you use voiceover in your work, my friends. God help you. It's flaccid, sloppy writing. Any idiot can write voiceover narration to explain the thoughts of a character. Most people would give anything to have that opportunity. To say all the things that were left unsaid. But it didn't make things any easier. I could help a thousand souls cross over, but when it came to Jack, it still hurt like hell. I love you too, Daddy. I used to think everyone saw the world the way I did. It's flaccid, sloppy writing. Divided, torn between two realities. But no, I was the only one. Oh. Or so I thought. We're closed. There's another funeral home across town. I can give you the number. I... Marianne. Who is this? You don't know me, Marianne. But I know you. Look, if this is a joke, I... You need to listen to me, Marianne. Mary died of that damn disease three years ago. So then, why am I looking for her? <laughs> okay, I I'm hanging up. I know what you are. What? Who is this? My name is Thomas. I need your help. Uh, listen, if that's all you've got, I'm... No, uh. there's more. I can give you the answers you've been looking for your whole life. I need you to trust me. Trust you? I don't even know you. It all starts with a dead girl. What did you say? The Neva Resort. Find me there. Please. The light, it's almost gone. 
It's not dark yet, but it's getting there. You're the only one who can stop it. You're my only chance. Hello? Hello? Shit. Sir, what if a writer is attempting to create a story where nothing much happens, where people don't change, they don't have any epiphanies, they struggle and are frustrated and nothing is resolved? More reflection of the real world. The real world? Yes, sir. The real fucking world. First of all, you write a screenplay without conflict or crisis, you'll bore your audience to tears. Secondly, Nothing happens in the world? Are you out of your fucking mind? People are murdered every day. There's genocide, war, corruption. Every fucking day, somewhere in the world, somebody sacrifices his life to save somebody else. Every fucking day, someone somewhere takes a conscious decision to destroy someone else. People find love, people lose it. For Christ's sake, a child watches a mother beaten to death on the steps of a church. If you can't find that stuff in life, then you, my friend, don't know crap about life. And why the fuck are you wasting my two precious hours with your movie? I don't have any use for it. I don't have any bloody use for it. Okay, thanks. 